Mitchell Mooney plant is here to ensure that the water we return to the environment is clean and can be used for future generations. It's a big deal. We treat the water coming out of our plant to some of the highest, uh, most stringent regulatory requirements in, in the country. You have an influent, you have an effluent. The influent is what comes into the plant and the effluent is what leaves the plant. How clean is that water? If you took our effluent from our plant, you ran it through a couple exotic treatment processes, it would be drinking water quality. On a daily basis, we can treat in a sustainable manner up to 24 million gallons a day. We've had as much as 40 million gallons come through the plant and an average of about 14 million gallons a day flows through this plant. We treat all the wastewater from the eastern half of the county and we have multiple pump stations and all the pump stations from the eastern half of Prince William County come here to this wastewater treatment plant. We take the wastewater, the people they either flush the water down the toilet or it goes down their sink um, and it comes into pipes into, into this treatment facility and then we use processes to filter that water to take the, the bad stuff out. In the pretreatment process all the untreated wastewater is entering into the plant and we have band screens that remove all the coarse debris so it removes the toilet paper and the sticks and rocks that could potentially get in the collection system and then that eliminates the possibility of damage to the equipment and further processes. Once it leaves pretreatment, it goes to our equalization basin where we can control and monitor the flow that goes through the plant. These are the equalization basins at the HL Mooney Advanced Water Reclamation Facility. They help us equalize the flow going through the plant, which is very important because this plant is designed for 24 million gallons per day, but it can handle a flow of up to 48 million gallons per day. The ability to equalize the flow before it goes through the processes let us optimize our chemicals and optimize the treatment process. If we didn't have equalization basins, if we had a high flow event where we had 50 million gallons coming through the plant, it would overwhelm our system and could cause treatment problems. It could cause problems with the environment if we weren't able to treat the wastewater efficiently and we could have you know, solids going out into the environment or potential contamination into the streams. After the wastewater has been through pretreatment and equalization, it's still pretty much the same wastewater that comes into the plant that leaves people's houses. So the first process that really treats the wastewater and removes contaminants is primary treatment. And gravity settles out solids to the bottom of the tank. They get pushed to the center of the tank where they get pumped to the solids processing side of the plant. The primary effluent becomes food for the bugs in the secondary treatment process. Secondary treatment is a biological treatment process where we grow microbes that treat the wastewater and uh, clean up all of the organic material and also remove nitrogen. The bioreactors are where most of the treatment that takes place at the wastewater plant occurs. The bacteria do the job here at the plant that would have had to be done out in the ecosystem. When you look at the wastewater, it looks different than the primary effluent and the raw wastewater did. It's a different color, it's more brown, less gray. And the reason that is, is the brown color is microbes. It's the microbes that we grew at the plant. Different types of microbes treat different parts of the wastewater. So we have microbes that will remove organic material from the wastewater, and they convert the organic material just to carbon dioxide and water. We have microbes that remove nitrogen, the bacteria are the hardest working life forms at the plant and they get the lowest salary. After the biological treatment process and the aeration basins, it comes to the secondary clarifiers where all the solids can settle out. At this point in the process, the nutrients have been removed, biochemical oxygen demand has been depleted, phosphorus, nitrogen and ammonia have been removed. It's critical that the nutrients are removed from the wastewater because BOD can deplete the oxygen in the streams and nutrients such as phosphorus and nitrogen can cause algae blooms that also deplete the oxygen 
and cause unsafe environment for fish and humans. And the secondary clarifiers, we have two scraper arms, one that's collecting sludge at the bottom of the basin and returning it back to the activated sludge process. And then we also have one collecting the solids that float to the top and sending those to our incinerator. After secondary clarification, the clean, chemically treated wastewater comes to our filtration process. Here we remove all the fine solids that didn't settle out or get scraped off in the secondary clarifiers. And as the clean water filters down through a sand filter, it removes all the fine particulate matter. These filters work by gravity. There's no mechanical processes. It's just the, the natural process of water filtering down through the sand by gravity, very similar to what happens in groundwater filtration. Before the water flows out to the Potomac River, we have to disinfect it. Uh, ultraviolet disinfection is a natural type of process where we use the, the wavelengths that are naturally in sunlight to disinfect uh, bacteria. The bacteria become sterilized, which means they can no longer reproduce in the environment. So by sterilizing the treated water before it goes out, we are essentially making it safe. By using ultraviolet disinfection lamps to disinfect our wastewater, we no longer need to use harmful chemicals or dangerous chemicals such as chlorine gas or sodium hypochlorite. And that makes the treatment plant safer for workers and for our neighbors. After the UV process, the water goes through our aeration cascade to add dissolved oxygen to the water. The oxygen is needed for the aquatic life in the stream. The cascade aeration process is simple, it's effective, and we like it because it uses so little energy to add the oxygen to the water. This is the Neapsco Creek, and this is where our outfall, the water that, that we've treated, goes back into the environment. It goes into Neapsco Creek, into the Potomac River, and then back into the Chesapeake Bay. There's so much oxygen and, and uh, clean water coming down into the creek. We have a lot of fish, a lot of wildlife that hangs out right here. We are an award-winning plant. We received the Platinum Award from the National Association of Clean Water Agencies. It symbolizes five years of perfect compliance with our wastewater permit. I'm proud to be the operations manager here at the H.L. Mooney facility. It makes me feel good to know that my job helps protect the environment and the community. People that enter this profession, they have a certain amount of pride that their work matters. You're doing something for the environment. You're doing something for your kids, what you leave behind. I think it's critical for everyone, including children, to, to understand that when, when their parents are paying the bill, they're helping the environment. They are doing a tremendous amount of good for the environment and we're very proud of what we do here at the, at the HL Mooney plant.